play a more number numbers <laughs> than classic. I think it's a good sign. Even our elder, he sprained his uh, right ankle. He still come, you know, with plunges. Well done, elder. Okay, uh, this morning we are going to talk about uh, a special special service yeah? from Numbers uh, chapter two, uh, chapter three and four. You must have heard uh, of this. Failing to plan is planning to fail, especially you know. We are talking about when we talk about the journey of life. Every one of us need to plan, and we know that the best way to plan for a journey is to hear from those who have been there before, right? For example, you look to the trip advisor. Is it trip advisor? Yeah, okay. If you are planning to climb Mount Everest, for example, who would you ask? <laughs> no, you ask the guy, okay, the guy who has accompanied many teams, as many as possible, to the Mount Everest. Why? Because they are the best, they are in the best position to help you in your planning. The book of Numbers tells us that after delivered the Israelites from the slavery in Egypt, God, in His mercy and grace, He made a plan. He made a plan for His people to have a good start in life. Why? God is an all, He is an all-knowing God. He is the only one. Listen, God is the only one who knows everything about the journey of the Israelites. Isn't that true? Yes. As you learned last Sunday from Numbers chapter 1 and 2, the preacher Okay, the preacher told us from the scripture, the journey to the promised land of the Israelites is not a walk in the park. Not a walk in the park. And we heard last Sunday that God instructed Moses to organize the people, number the warriors, all together, six, about 600,000 of them, organized them for war. And with the tabernacle right in the center. In other words, God's powerhouse, God's presence as the powerhouse among the people. Whether they are settled in camp like this, or they are on the move. This morning, in number chapter 3 and 4, we will see God organize the Israelites for worship. So this is the big picture. Listen. The journey through the desert to the promised land. God's people not only need to fight the war, but also worship God at the same time. There is a classic example in Exodus chapter 17 when the Israelites have to fight the Damalakites. Moses, Aaron, and her break. Remember? In chapter 17, verse 10 to 11, so Joshua did as Moses told him and fought with the Amalekites. While Moses, Aaron, and her went up to the top of the hill, whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. And whenever he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. So we see Moses praying for victory, while Joshua, the commander, leads the soldiers fighting the enemy. So Joshua started losing when Moses stopped praying. When Moses resumed his prayer, Joshua win again. So likewise, the way to win the battle against the virus is prayer. I'm so glad yesterday 
uh, we have uh, quite a number of uh, younger prayer warrior team enjoy the prayer meeting. The presence of God and the continual worship of Him will give His people victory. Give His people victory over all the trial and temptation. So this is God's plan for a good start for the Israelites. If they follow faithfully, they will succeed. And we see in number ch chapter 3 and 4, God commands Moses to organize this special group of people to take charge of the tabernacle worship. And this special group of people consists of Aaron's uh, son and the tribe of Levites. Now we were told last Sunday that the tribe of Levites were not counted were not numbered because God has a special service for them. So this morning, we will learn how special is the special service of the priests and the Levites in the tabernacle. First, they are called to holy worship. In the beginning, in the beginning of chapter 3, the first three verses, it begins with a special grace of God. We see here that the priests, that is the sons of uh, that are the sons of uh, Aaron, they were ordained in the worship of God. Look at verse three, uh, verse two and three. These are the names of the son of Aaron: Nadab the firstborn, and Abihu, Eliza, and Itamar. Verse three. These are the names of the son of Aaron the anointed priest whom he ordained to serve as priest. What is ordained? Ordained in verse 3 ordained as priest in verse 3 in Hebrew language literally means the hands are filled filled with what? filled with, filled with authority, filled with responsibility to do the work of the worship of God. That's what it means. In other words in other words, without any merit of Aaron or his son, God has given them the privilege to take the office of priest. So are we Christian? Without merit, we are given the privilege to serve God as priests in His holy kingdom. In fact, this morning, uh, Deacon Rona has Pray over this verse. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you, referring to Christian, are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, God's possession. That you may proclaim the excellencies of him who caught you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Priests are chosen by God. Without any. So it is by grace we are called up for salvation. Out of the darkness of sins into the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. For what? For the worship of God. With all honesty and sincerity. I hope we really understand how privileged we are. Not only being saved eternally, but also given the honor to proclaim the excellency of Jesus Christ. Now this is God's special grace. Just like the priest serving in the tabernacle. But just before the duties of the Levites are listed, the death of two priests who are Aaron's two elder sons, Nadab and Abihu, is stated in verse 4. They died because they offered, according to this verse, unauthorized or strange fire. We are not sure what exactly the sin they have committed, but we can be very sure that it is something offensive to the holiness of God. It, it could be a failure to follow the proper procedures. It could be the wrong type of animal offered in worship. Or it could be due to bad attitude, like the example of Cain, Remember Cain and Abel? 
the two sons of Adam, when Cain's, off, Cain's offering was rejected by God, the Bible tells us, Cain got angry with God and he became jealous of his brother Abel, whose offering pleases God. But Cain was cursed because he murdered his brothers for no good reason. And this is what uh, Genesis chapter 4, verse 11 and 12 tells us. And now you came are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, this is the curse, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. Then it is going to be very fruitless labor. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Well, this could be one of the reasons, or it could be dishonesty or insincerity in their worship offering. When you come to worship, you bring the offering. Like Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter 5. We all know this. We studied Acts before. Acts chapter 5, the first five verses, the couple was struck dead for lying to the Holy Spirit. The death of Ananias and Sapphira. Very sudden. It seems that God is graceless. But that is God's standard. God's standards of worship must be pure and holy. Priesthood is a great privilege, yes. But it comes with heavy responsibility. This is because the priests lead people in worship of the Holy God. They are standing between the Holy God and the sinful people. They must watch their lives carefully. Any mistake can cost their life. Even the high priests, as we know, fear death too. When they enter into the Holy of the Holies, a rope is tied to their waist so that their body can be pulled out of the holy place if they are dead. Nilat and Abihu were careless in their worship and they were struck dead. They do not have son, according to this verse, they do not have son to pass down the priest's duties. So the third and the fourth son of Aaron, Eliza and Ithama, take over. So what is the implication? There must be no compromise in worship standard. The Holy God must be worshipped according to His standards of holiness. So let me ask you this morning, how do you approach the worship service this morning? Are there unauthorized fire offered in this worship hall this morning? Is your attitude of coming here to worship right before God? Well, other people may not see, other people may not know it, but God knows. So that is where the danger is. Christians must treat God and His name with the highest honor and respect. The death of Aaron's two eldest son clearly served as a warning not only to the subsequent priests who took over the office, but also a warning to the Levites who are called to assist the priests in the sacred work in the tabernacle. Who are these Levites? They are the descendants of Levi. They are a tribe that was cursed, listen, cursed by Jacob, their father, in Genesis chapter 49, verse 7, for losing their heads and taking the law into their own hands and cruelly killed many people. And this is the curse pronounced to them by their own father. Cursed be their anger, referring to the Levites. For it is fierce and their wrath. For it is cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. In other words, the Levites were doomed. 
and will never be able to rise up as a united and powerful tribe among his brethren. Yet God had chosen them to do the special service here. Now in this case, what exactly is their service? The Levites are to handle the settling up, guarding, taking down and transportation of the tabernacles. Their tasks are basically mundane. Like so coolie, you know, do hard job. Mundane, brainless job. We no scope for promotion. But the tabernacle, listen, symbolizes the presence of the Holy God. And it is considered sacred. And only specific people, specially appointed by God, can do the job. We may say that the Levites are the ordinary people chosen by God to do the extraordinary tasks. So in chapter 3, we see the descriptions of the different tasks assigned to the three clan uh, of the Levite tribes. And then in chapter 4, which we didn't read this morning, I hope they have read before, more details of their works were given. Let's take a look. Gershonite, this is the first of the three clans. Their job is to carry the screen and the cover and they came they came on the west of the tabernacle. Kohatites, they carry the furniture and they came on you know the furniture like uh, the lampstand, the up of the up of the covenant, the lampstand, the table, the altar, and they came on the south south of the tabernacle. And then we have the third one. Merarites, they carry the poles, the pads, the ropes, and they came on the they came on the north. The priests, there's Aaron, Moses, and Aaron's children, of course, they came on the east. East is the entrance of the tabernacle. Now let's ask this question. Should they be happy for giving this task to do? If you are given this task, will you be happy? You carry. All the heavy stuff you carry. Set up, you go and set up. You know, tear down, you also tear down. But I tell you, they should be happy. Because they have the mandate of God. This is how we find out. If you read through chapter 3 and 4, you will see this phrase repeated. Moses told them what exactly God has commanded. It's mentioned, mentioned so many times. In 3.16, 3.42, 3.51, 4.37, 4.41, 4.45, and 4.49. They are doing exactly what God has commanded. In other words, they are given the mandate to do it. Not for other people. Moreover, God has made it clear that He is conferring on them a special privilege of being owned by God. This is found in chapter 3, verse 40 to 51, including their cattle. We are talking about the Levites. So take a look. Take a look at chapter 3, verse 40 to 41. Here we see God is making them His own inheritance, replacing the inheritance he claimed on the firstborn of Israel. Remember on the 10th uh, miracle, the 10th tenth, the tenth plague in Egypt, the Passover, God spared all the firstborn of Israel. Because God spared the firstborn of Israel. The firstborn of Egypt shall all die. But firstborn of the Israelites all survive and become God's inheritance. He belonged to God. So verse chapter 3, verse 40 says, And the Lord said to Moses, List all the firstborn males of the people of Israel from a month old and upward, taking the number of their names. 41. And you shall take the Levites 
So you count the Israelites firstborn, then now you count the Levites firstborn. I am the Lord. Instead of all the firstborn among the people of Israel and the cattle of the Levite, instead of all the firstborn among the cattle of the people of Israel. So confusing, right? <laughs> Basically, meaning that the number of the firstborn of Easter, sorry, the, uh, of a Levite are to replace, okay, replace the firstborn of Israel. Verse 45, take the Levites instead of all the firstborn among the people of Israel and the cattle of the Levites instead of their cattle. The Levite shall be mine. I am the Lord. So if God is going to use already own the firstborn of the Israelites, that is all together, all the twelve of the in tribes. But now no. He put it aside and he said, Levite, you will replace them. They don't come and serve me, you come and serve me in the tabernacle. So this is the special grace of God to the Levite. They are now God's inheritance to serve him in this holy purpose. Likewise for all of us, through the work of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, we Christians, listen, are owned by God. Our lives, our possessions are to be devoted to serve the purpose of God. Nothing else. Now beside God's special grace, there is also the special number. Some may ask, why God did not choose other tribes? Choose other tribes. They still have another at least 12 tribes, to take charge of the tabernacle. Here we see the wisdom of God. The Levites are, are small in number, but it matches the number of the firstborn of Israel with only 270 short, right? And God's command was that allow the Israelites to redeem and give the price. After they redeem, take the money and give it to heaven. Still go back to serve the Lord. However, the 22,000 of Levites will be the one who will serve the tabernacle. In other words, by doing this, the strength of the fighting men, remember 600,000, will not be depleted. Right? If you take one of the bigger tribe, then you will deplete the fighting strength. We can see that the Levites are not randomly chosen, but it is according to the wisdom of God. There is good reason why God has chosen certain number of people to do His work. So don't ask why call me and not someone else. Don't ask why not more, why not less. It is so important for us not to question the Creator, but to follow exactly what He says. And that is why, that is why we hold so dear to every word in the Bible. Now, beside the specific number of workers, in God's eternal wisdom, specific tasks and responsibility are also allocated to each of the clan of uh, the Levites. Specific vocation. For example, while the priests and the Levites are to guard the tabernacle to prevent outsiders come near the tabernacle. The Levite, listen, the Levite themselves are not allowed to touch or even look at the sacred things. As we see in chapter 3, verse 10. And you shall appoint Aaron and his son, and they shall guard their priesthood. But if any outsider come near, he shall be put to death. In other words, including the Levites. Verse, chapter 4, verse 15. And when Aaron and his sons have finished, this is talking about uh, packing, unpacking, huh? finished covering the sanctuary and all the furnishings of the sanctuary, the holy place, huh? as the camp set up, after that, the sons of Kohath shall come to carry this, but they must not touch holy things, lest they die. In other words, when they are doing packing, unpacking, they see the vessel, huh? the table, uh, the showbread, or all the things that eat, 
uh, the furnitures in the, uh, the holy place, device are not supposed to touch. If they touch, they lie. Chapter 4, verse 20. But they shall not go in to look on the holy things even for a moment, lest they die. Chapter 4, verse 13. Tell us that cannot even take a peep. Don't be busy body. Don't be so curious. Your curiosity can kill you. Something like that. God makes it very clear that the Levites must never infringe into the special right of the priest. That is the job of the priest. They can touch, they can move, they can see. But you shouldn't be there. So you can see that our God is a God of order. Clearly demonstrated here, everyone is appointed according to his service and according to his ability. Right here for ourselves also. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28 to 30, Paul tells us that and God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gift of healing, helping, administrating, and various kinds of tongues. Verse 29 and 30 are important. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? No, the answer is no, of course. Are all teachers? No. Do all work miracles? No. Do all possess gifts of healing? No. Do all speak with tongues? No. Do all interpret? No. God in His wisdom has assigned to each of us a specific vocation. I'm here as your pastor. Not because I want it, I apply for it. But because God has graciously appointed me to be here, in spite of I'm already 58 years old. <laughs> this is the joke that has been circling around in the EP circle. <clears throat> Being a second career pastor, of course, my age <laughs> will be like that will be at that level, you know, unlike our uh, next pastor who was only 40 years old. Now he's young, although he's injured, but he still can run. God, God, in his own wisdom, he will appoint who to do what. Do you like my job? Do you like to take my job? I hope you don't. <laughs> okay? Because you have to do things that people normally don't like to do. Alright, you want to know the detail, you can come and see me after this worship. It will be a disaster when we try to do what we are not called and what we are not equipped to do in the church. But all the work, don't worry, all the work in the church and all the people that God have called. We are to work together under the authority. Remember, God is the God of order. While the Levites are to stay focused on their vocation, pack and pack carry, God, God duty. They are to work under the authority of the priests. For example, Eliza in chapter 3, verse 32, Itama. Another son of Aaron, a priest, in chapter 4, verse 28 and 33. In other words, they must remember, Levites must remember that while their service is specific, exclusive, and very important, but they must submit to the leadership ordained over them by God. In our New Testament context, God also ordained specific leaders to make account to Him. Look at Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17, he said, Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your soul. Important or not? Important. As those who will have to give an account. They have the responsibility to do two things. To watch over your soul, at the same time give an account to who? To God. It's easy for me to give an account to another man. 
I can, I, I can, I can cook the number. But when you account to God, that is difficult, right? Because He knows everything. He knows what you have done and what you have not. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning. In other words, don't give them problems. Cooperate with them. For that would be of no advantage to you. Why? He might quit. Right? Or he might just do a lousy job. But God will make you account if you don't submit to the leaders that God have given to you. So in a way, the leaders are the gift of the member. But both leaders and members are to learn obedience. As the leadership is respected and obeyed, God's authority is also respected and obeyed by both the priests and the Levites. So what's the implication? It's that all service to God is sacred. Reading and praying is sacred. Bringing our offering and tithes this morning to God is sacred. Even the lowest level in the service of God is sacred and blessed, like the divine. So therefore, no competing service, but complementary service. Don't compare, don't compete, don't complain, but patiently submit to God's word. For example, ushering. This morning, who are the ushers? Ushering or clicking the PowerPoint slide is as sacred as sharing the worship service. Mother, changing the baby diapers at home is as sacred as those who serve full time in the church office. Remember, your service is special because you are specially chosen by God to serve Him in this specific area. No one can do the job that God has given to you, specifically you. Either Charlie or Esther, all specific. Charlie will be the mother of two children, specific. Likewise for Esther Ong. So remember, your little baby will grow up one day to be a mature person, not through a miracle pill, but through your faithful feeding, spoon by spoon, word by word of the gospel. I know sometimes it's very difficult. You want to give up, right? And sometimes you find it so mundane. But this is important because your perceptions of your position in the kingdom of God is that will directly influence the way you live and the way you serve God. I don't know whether you watch the TV show or not called Sen Huo Taren. Sen Huo Taren. <coughs> Sometimes I watch. <laughs> but this program introduces individuals uh, who are outstanding in their respective uh, fields of work. For example, cooking a dish, is a cooking a dish of excellent quality based on hard work and enthusiasm. For how long? For 30, 40 years. Or an ordinary worker with extraordinary skill, for example, a noodle maker who can toss the noodles across the room into the bowls. Be diligent in our respective special sacred service. Not secret service, sacred service. Christ is present. When you are doing the work, when you are feeding spoon by spoon into the mouth of your babies, sometimes people will spit at you. But Christ is present to see your faithful service. Be faithful, be thankful, and be fruitful. Do your job in a way that will bring glory to God. So this is the, the exhortation from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Paul says, so why, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, including changing the diaper, 
do all to the glory of God. If you are the usher, if today if you are doing the screening uh, uh, temperature, you know, you come to pastor, thank error, thank error. <laughs> Continue to do, don't give up. Because <laughs> pastor will recover. <laughs> So like a priest, in conclusion, like the priest and the Levites, we are, as Christians, we are given the privilege to do the holy worship of God and to do the sacred service to Him. So we must take God's holiness seriously. Do our given task diligently and work with the leadership ordained by God closely. And central to all our worship and all our service is the command of God. So truth for life. God's work must be done in God's way. There is no other way. Our life will be a success all the way if we just do that. So for application today, first, you must know the word of God and never depart from it. To move forward, we must engage the word of God. You know, just like driving a car. Right, for those who drive a car, the car won't move until the gear, the gear is engaged, right? You know, when Joshua leads the Israelites to defeat the enemy and to occupy, before they occupy the promised land, God told him in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, He said, Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, referring to the word of God, but you shall meditate on it day and night. So that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. If you don't read, you don't meditate, how do you know what to do? Let God speak to you through the Bible. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Next, for application, do your part faithfully. There is no accident that you are here in TCBC. There is no accident that you you are called to do certain things. You have a part to play. Everyone counts because we belong to God. God will not want any one of us to be loitering in church but doing nothing, just like this. You know this water of Niagara Falls? If you look at it, you will say, wow, this is good for a photo shoot, right? But imagine if the water that going down in this volume is turned into power, hydropower, it will provide for thousands and thousands of households need. Don't you think so? So do not wander around in the church and waste the opportunity of being able to do the special worship and the sacred service. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you have called us with a heavy price the cost of your of the life of your Son, Jesus Christ. Now we belong to you. All our possessions belong to you. And you expect us to serve you with our life and our possession in worship, in holy worship, and in sacred service. Help us, O Lord, not to loiter around and not really serve you sincerely. We pray, the Lord, that you help us to continue, Lord, to read the word, to take direction from you, and to really carry out what you have asked us to do. Grant us the patience and the pers perseverance. In Jesus' name we pray. So the next thing we're going to do is to the partake of a